Hi, everyone. Just waiting on my uh, co-host here. Thanks for joining today. Me too, Paul. Thanks for thanks for joining. Hi, Catherine. Welcome to the party. <laughs> For everyone in attendance, if you want to, you know, pop in the comments, say hi, who, are, who you are, where you're from, and uh, let's go one step further today and see what uh, what you want to learn today. Oh, that's awesome, Richard. I am too, I have to admit. Hey, Beth. Mohammed. Oh, Mike. <laughs> Mike from Pakistan. What's going on? Okay, give me one second. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Katie. Welcome to the party. Thanks. Hey, did you check your email? I did. Just send it send out right now. Cool. Hey, everyone. Happy <laughs> Wednesday. We got a, a bunch of excited people here waiting, waiting for them for Josh to join. <laughs> hey, Paul. Hey, Mark. Hey, if you guys want to throw your LinkedIn link so we can all connect with y'all, that would be so fun. Throw them in the chat. I'll toss mine in there. Hey, Matt. I'm so excited for this session today, Jeff. It sound, sounded like we've got some really fun sequences to review. Oh, the ones that we have are pretty exciting, actually. I'm um, been doing this for a while now and uh, yeah the sequences that we have there's lots of learning to be done some some interesting new things and uh, some tried and true stuff that uh, that we're going to go through yeah I'm, I'm really excited it's gonna be really good mm -hmm. and uh, don't be a rookie like I just proved to be make sure your chat is turned to panelists and attendees so everyone <laughs> can see your questions and thoughts too because uh i did just ball privy to that like always <laughs> my human is showing again Ugh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh that's fun humans good though right katie it is that's yeah. how we sell that's how we sell that's me exactly yeah. make good connections and all those fun things i'm a big i'm a big fan of uh humanization i was actually in a clubhouse 
clubhouse call about this the other day talking about like why authentication and like being authentic seems like such a buzzy weird word now versus like being human right and uh we are talking about how it's just kind of funny how different levels of authenticity depends on like the different people yeah and how sometimes like people feel this need to judge other people based on them not being authentic enough. And it's like, who's really to say that? So <laughs> it's a really interesting discussion. Join me on That's Clubhouse. Cool. Well, speaking <laughs> of joining, yet. hey, we have Josh on in the house. What's going on, Josh? <laughs> Hi, everybody. Nice to, nice to see everybody. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? Hey, 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 Katie Ray. I doubled the honey in my hollow this weekend. It was delicious. <laughs> So a lot of people have different love languages. Katie's love language to me is sending pictures of challah. And, yeah. you know, she gets the twist and the, and the glaze. And as an old Jewish man, I got to say, I'm liking it. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, man. It is, it is my well, love language. I got to figure out how to mail them. So that's my next, <laughs> next task. That's awesome. What, what sort of inspired the challah baking that seems to be a random i mean i've seen cookies right? i've Everyone, seen alcohol but the challah yeah, thing a lot is of like people took up baking and like bread making with covid and honestly and i think uh i think i think this would make you this response would make you happy is um you know my sister her partner is um a very devout uh jewish woman and it's really brought in a lot of different types of cooking for her. And she started making it. And I said, I'd love to try this. And she's like, I think you would love it. So on Saturdays, we spend four hours on Zoom spending time, even though she lives in California and I'm in Texas. And we get to catch up with each other, talk about our lives. And it's really fun. Like it's a fun relationship thing, I think. So as it's Fantastic. meant to be. That's fantastic. Awesome. It sounds better than playing rummy cubes, which is what I've been doing. So it's good. <laughs> I'll get you on our next Zoom call. I'll send you an invite. Thank you you. Make it with us. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. That's amazing. Well, hey, Josh, sorry. So sorry about uh, the mix up there. Didn't send you the link in the in the invite. Um, glad to have you on and glad we, we solved that really quickly. Um, um, but yeah, again, thanks for joining Katie and I for this event. Um, I've seen you on other kind of similar events in the past and I thought you were amazing. And then obviously I got down the rabbit hole into all your videos and I went, this guy's <laughs> got to be on my show. <laughs> and clearly you have good taste. Clearly, this is, we've established this. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, well, with, with that in mind, we have, um, we're going to be reviewing sequences today. So we're, we're going to be reviewing emails, phone scripts, LinkedIn messages. Um, most of these e um, sequences are emails, but we're going to start each review with a, a look at the actual sequence flow. So what steps are involved, um, we, you know, with the, the sequence of events, that kind of stuff. So um, I'd love to get your feedback, Katie, yours too. Um, really excited to hear what you have to say. Um, so before we get going, does any, uh, anyone on the panel have any questions for me or comments for the, for the audience? I'm do you excited. want me, do you want Paula Abdul, Josh, or do you want Simon Cowell, Josh? Do you want someone in the middle? It's up to you. Can't you. Take I can take Simon Cowell role, Josh. Simon that's Cowell, okay. that's right. what I did. Right. <laughs> right. Like the poop on the parade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's be, be pure josh let's just i want to see people are here to see you josh. pure josh man okay <laughs> okay. All right. okay. All right. awesome <laughs> so josh 1.0 or 2.0 2.0 i got the eq update Ooh. or like josh raw like 1.0 just like huh. unadulterated well, i'm gonna go with katie on this what do you say katie? unadulterated let's hear it okay let's okay. go okay. let's go you know, no at EQ. the end of the day we're just no trying issue. to help people make their their processes okay. better right, right. so okay yeah. it's all said in love yeah exactly. I, I, do, I do want to preface this before we kind of jump in with with one observation because i've done these types of things before yeah. and i think this is a really hard job for salespeople because they're not given a lot with regards to understanding the people that they're reaching out to. Yeah. Um, they're often given very surface level information or language that sounds like a marketing brochure yeah. or they've inherited templates that they have to use. So these are very well-intentioned salespeople. And so I hope I can provide them some ideas on how they can get a little closer to the customer because ultimately that's what's gonna help you 
create copy that's going to be more interesting to people. And I know yeah. we're going to talk about templates and everything, but there's a sort of a cart before the horse thing. And I'll share some tips today that I've seen other SDRs using that are helping them get responses without even going through any product training. Um, a really interesting method that they're using, which we can certainly, you know, sort of get into as we get on with the, with the show today. Oh, that's a great point, Josh. And thanks for, thanks for bringing that up because there's a lot of reps that don't have the autonomy to actually execute a lot of the things we talk about. So um, what you teach, what you're just talking about really is things, tips that you can use, even if you're in that little box and you're limited, right? Like things that just any everyday seller can use. Yeah. Awesome. Um, okay, perfect. So let's start off with uh, review number one. Um, so this, this comes from uh, a, a gentleman in the uh, manufacturing space uh, and his sequence is, is not exactly a long one anyone would say but uh, it's two emails um, both manual uh, and are, are very light um, now before we go into the actual copy itself uh, it's, it's good to know that um, he does get an 18 percent response rate and for every single response that he gets that isn't a direct no I'm not interested at all um, he's going to pick up the phone right away to call the gentleman I uh, called the call the prospect so with that said, that response rate, is that, a, is that a positive, negative or neutral response rate? He was saying it's mostly positive. So he's not getting a lot of those take me off your list or um, mm. I'm not interested type things that you tend to see on, on these types of, I guess, vanity metrics, right. but um, he didn't have an 18%, exact number. 18% positive response rate. He should be running this webinar. That's right. Really good. <laughs> awesome job. Yeah, that's phenomenal. That's what I was thinking too. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what, do you, what are your thoughts on the two step? Well, look, I, I'm looking at the results. Yeah. So whenever I see someone getting an 18% positive response rate on cold emails, I'm really hesitant to mess with anything. That's a really good positive response rate. I mean, anything over 10 is considered really good. So that's really phenomenal. I'd also wanna know of that 18%, is it statistically significant? Um, you know, meaning did he send this to three people and got an 18% or does he send out like thousands of these? I'm just quite, I don't know if it's, you know, just, I'm wondering about that 18%, but I'll, I'll give you my take on the copy, um, but I would need some context um, before I kind of get into any of these things to the best that we can do it. I need to know a couple things. Um, I need to know who the person is that we're reaching out to, Yep. what their job is that they're trying to get done, what sucks about the job before they give this person money. And what changes for the better after they give this person money? Because otherwise it's gonna be really hard for me to dissect these without some context. Um, because everybody you reach out to is getting the job done today somehow. And what I have to understand is from your perspective and you should have a perspective, what sucks about how they're getting the job done today? Um, by, by way of right. example, I'm washing my car with a bucket right now. Right. It's fine until I got this email from Adam's car wash supply that said, Hey, Josh, how do you know that your car wash mitt isn't scratching your car? And it turns out that when you wash your car with a normal bucket, dirt can get on your sponge and that can scratch your car. And why does that suck? Because when you scratch your car, it's 800 bucks to fix. And they sell a new type of bucket that you rub your sponge on and the dirt settles to the bottom of the bucket and off your car. So you have to have a perspective like that so yep. that I can understand the email. Um, and you have to have a point of view about what's meaningfully different about what you're offering. Not just that it's a red bucket, yep. but that it has a great, and that matters because it keeps the dirt on the bottom of the bucket. And the reason that matters is that it doesn't scratch your car. So just as a little, little sort of backdrop, if we can get to that as, as best we can. Yeah, for sure. Well, we do actually have the, the person who submitted this sequence on, um, on, on our event today. So I'm gonna invite that person to send in the chat to provide that context if, if you'd like. That'd be great. So yeah, so tell me um, who the person is, their title, what sucks about how they're getting the job done today before they give you money and why does it suck? And then what changes for the better after they give you money? Okay, so I'll answer on behalf of what John's already given me, but um, he was saying it was the operations, the head of operations, engineering or manufacturer at manufacturing companies. So we got, that's the role. So John, why does it suck? What, what sucks about their role today? Not the role, the job. So that person's trying Sorry. to get a job done. They're, they're trying to wash the car with a bucket. Everyone's, everyone's got a bucket. So tell me how this person is getting the job done today and what sucks about it. Here, hold on. 
So I'm gonna guess from this email that the thing that sucks is that when people wanna get this job done, it's a manual programming process, which I would imagine requires a tremendous amount of time. Uh, I'm guessing, I'm, I'm kind of reading between the lines here. Yeah. And because that takes a tremendous amount of time, what ends up happening is you can't get the product out quick enough to meet the demand. And when you can't get the product quick enough out to meet the demand, um, you can lose sales and upset upset customers. I'm sort of reading between the line, r- lines a little bit here. Is that Am I on the right track, John? Yeah, he says on the chat that you are getting it, Josh. Okay. That's exactly it. Um, what, what, other, what other implications are there? I would imagine, and again, I don't know anything about this, but whenever there's manual things, sometimes um, quality can, quality can um, be not as good. Is that a thing with this or not, not really with regards to this job? Quality, quality. consistency. Okay. 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 So, uh, so I love to start these emails with a trigger. So it's kind of the first T in my framework. Um, what is it inspiring you to reach out to this person rather than just any person? So you're saying, you know, I saw your team is looking to hire manual welders. Um, I would, I might want to, I might add a little bit to that, um, which leads me to believe that X, um, you're ramping up production just to give some more context. Um, you know, you know, uh, contract manufacturers are using a lesser known robot welder that doesn't require manual programming um, can keep up with demand and handle part, uh, part-to-part variation. So let me talk a little bit about that. So what's, what's part-to-part variation? Is that something that they can't do without you? Or are they doing it without you and it's, it's, a ma- it's very manual? What is, the, what is part-to-part manu- variation? Why does it matter? So inconsistencies with the materials. Currently, robots cannot solve this problem. Okay, so um, I got it. So what I, what I might do here, this is just small tweaks. This is a really good email. So one thing that's great about this is the length of it. Um, it looks like a text, which is great. So I would do the context sentence, the trigger. You know, saw your team is looking to hire manual welders. Um, you know, then I would add a, an illumination question to get them to think a little bit differently about how they're getting the job done today. I might say something like, you know, what are you doing to ensure that you're able to keep up with production without labor intensive manual processes that can cause errors. And then I would say Acme and Beta, if you can name specific contract manufacturers like them um, are using a different approach that doesn't require manual programming um, um, while handling part to part variation worth a convo. So again, the, the, the purpose of the think sentence is to get people to think a little differently about how they're getting the job done today. And it typically sounds like, what are you doing to ensure so that terrible bad thing doesn't happen? Right. But overall, it's a great email. The other thing I like about this email is it's not asking for time at the end. Um, oftentimes I see emails that say, you know, are, you know, can you meet Tuesday or Wednesday at three o'clock? Um, those create a little bit more friction. And what I like about this email is it's piquing a little curiosity and the aim of it looks like it's trying to start a conversation rather than you know, go, for the, go for the meeting right out of, the, out of the gate. I also like the word lesser known a lot um, because it's one of those words like unconventional, lesser known, unusual, that sort of piques, piques curiosity. Right. Yeah, all good points, Josh, thank you. Um, so do you wanna see the follow-up to this one? Sure. Let's take a look. Um, one of the things that I've heard, and I don't have data to back this up, but a couple of people that I respect tremendously in the industry um, have quite a bit of success with a simple email bump, meaning three days later, you send a second email that references the first email. And it simply says, any thoughts or did I miss the mark? Um, So it's something you might want to test out um, to see if you can't get a little more juice out of that first email. Um, For some people, I hear that works really well and getting a a response for others, not as much, but it's something you might want to consider. Um, With regards to follow-up emails, I have a very different perspective on it. Um, This is the way I like to think of it. And what I I think is this, 
Um, let's take Uber, for example. Let's imagine that you're Uber and you're coming to market and you're going up against taxis. There's lots of problems with the taxi. Problem number one is if it's five o'clock on a Friday or it's raining, hard to get a cab. Mm -hmm. The reason that sucks is you might be late to a very important meeting. The other reason it sucks is sometimes the cabs are dirty and the dirt can get on your clothes. The other reason cabs suck is that they can smell real bad. The other reason cabs suck is that the driver sometimes can pressure you into paying with cash. The other reason they suck is that the cab driver goes his or her own way and you don't really know if they're taking the shortest possible route. Your product solves lots of problems too. And what I like to do is make one chess move or one problem per email. So rather than sending one page overviews, because let's face it, nobody's reading your one page overview probably. Um, the idea here is to illuminate different problems, make one chess move per problem, per email rather. Yeah, good point, uh, Josh. That's that's really good points. I've had a lot of success with the bump the bump email, as you say. Um, we even have a sequence on this uh, on this deck that that actually utilizes it pretty well. Um, and uh, I call I call it the breadcrumb approach, telling the story in little bits, as opposed to giving the whole loaf, <laughs> I guess. But uh, everybody kind of has their own version of that. Um, absolutely love it though. Um, so in your in your opinion, with this one, it might have been more useful to maybe just illuminate that first point you were making with a bump before kind of getting into the next um, breadcrumb or the next piece of the story. Yeah, or but with regards to subsequent emails, make sure that you're actually illuminating another problem. So when you say robots tracks for larger paths, parts, we, we also have robots on tracks for your larger parts. That's what you do, but people don't care about what you do. They care about what you can do for them. Mm -hmm. right. So what you do is you put on braces but people don't want braces. What they want is the confidence that comes having the perfect smile. So the idea here is to start with the problem that people may or may not know about and then shine a light on what's possible using third party va validation. So, you know, first sentence is the trigger. Hey, Josh, notice that you're signed up for Iron Man Cozumel. Second sentence is the think. We're going to illuminate a problem. I may or may not know I have, hey, Josh, what are you doing to ensure the last, what are you doing to ensure your 26.2 mile run doesn't turn into a Frankenstein walk? Hmm, I'm not sure what I'm doing about that. Third sentence is third party validation. Other age groupers in their 50s are using a different training approach to ensure the last 10 miles doesn't turn into a Frankenstein walk. And then the final sentence is talk. Right, do they want to talk? You know, worth a convo. Sound interesting. So I like to follow that structure for each touch, highlighting a different problem, or as you put it, a different breadcrumb for each email. With, with this is also a very big, this is also a very big ask. Yeah. Asking someone you don't know to open up a PDF and to answer questions and to say part as friends. I have another pretty strong perspective on this. And a lot of people disagree with me on this. I don't think Prospects want relationships or friendships with salespeople. They got enough friendships and relations. I'm trying to get out of friendships and relationships I have. I have too many. I don't like how some, <laughs> so, so what they want is ideas that can help them kick more ass. New ideas that they haven't thought of before that can help them make progress because progress is the only thing that makes us happy as humans. Think about it for a second. You set a goal. You finish your marathon. Someone told me in the comments, Josh, don't talk about marathons. I'm sorry, I'm doing that again. So you, yeah, sorry, you, and Kevin. You and, and I with it's, short it's, legs that don't run are struggling over it's, here. It's, 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 it, the, high, the high is temporary. The high, I knew it. <laughs> sorry, Kevin. The high is temporary. I got to get some more stories. All right, listen, you're baking a challah, all right? <laughs> and the goal is the challah. You bake it, you feel good, and then that kind of dissipates because you've hit your goal. It's the same thing with cold emails. People just want to make progress. It's the journey. It's the progress. That's the fun stuff. Yeah. So our job is to highlight new ideas and new perspectives that can help people make progress by showing them what's possible because they might not know. And, and the best story that I have to, uh, to illustrate that is the one I just told with the wash car bucket. Like I just didn't know that there were these risks associated 
with using a wash car bucket. And I'm pretty meticulous about my car. Same thing happened with me with my running sneakers. It's a great you know, approach to learn. I, I went into a store once just to kill some time. My wife was in the mall. I went into a fit to run store. And if the sales associate said to me, what brings you in today? I would have said nothing. But she looked at my sneakers. She said, are you a runner? I said, yes. She said, what distance? I said, marathon. She said, have you ever had a running gait test? Moments later, I'm on a treadmill. She shows me my feet are pronated. And she said, did you know if you run in sneakers that are not made for pronated feet, you can get injured on long distance runs. Hmm. And 10 minutes later, I'm spending 80 fucking dollars on insoles <laughs> because I, I wasn't aware of this problem. That's our job. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's funny you say that, Josh. So I'm, I'm in the camp with you 100%. Um, I had a debate with one of my good friends on the weekend about how he believes that sales is done through friendships. And I'm more inclined to believe that a, a gentleman I that used to work with years ago, he was a realtor in Vancouver. And he said his tagline was, I want to be your second choice realtor because he says i want you to go to your friend i want that friend to you know do their thing and and you know build that trust and and, and leverage that trust to, to sell your home and then when they don't succeed i want you to come to me because i have the stats to prove i'm the best yeah well <laughs> I, I, have a, I have a little bit of a, i have a little bit of a different take on that because that's very um that's not that's really reactive and not proactive so yeah. I, i've had the same lawn guy for seven years there was nothing wrong with my lawn guy. Literally a guy three months ago knocked on my door. I love when people knock on my door, especially people that are playing their own business. And the guy opens the door. He's got a mask on. He's social distancing. And he said, hey, Josh, I know we don't know each other, but can I show you something that might need your attention on your roof? And I said, sure. And I came out and there was a branch, a couple branches of a tree over my roof. And he said, the problem with that is iguanas can get on there and they can get into your attic. Would you like me to take care of that for you? I said, sure. Got that done. He said, hey, Josh, are you aware that you have some brown grass spots in the back because these sprinklers aren't really dialed in? I'm going to dial them in for you. And then he said, Josh, I drew a lighting plan for your landscaping that can make it the envy of your neighborhood. P.S. I ended up spending 7,500 bucks with that guy. Whoa. He is now my lawn maintenance guy. I'm paying him 125 bucks a month rather than 75 bucks a month because he is showing me how to make better progress. He's illuminating and making deposits and that's sales. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't like the idea of waiting around. I like the idea of being proactive and that's what we have an opportunity to do with, with emails. And just to accentuate this, cause it's such an important point. I want to really drive this home. It's about meaningfully different. Like I'll give you an example. I was driving on the freeway once and I saw a U-Haul and the back of the U-Haul, there was a picture and it said, our loading ramp is down here. It's called the easy loading ramp. Right. Our competitors are up here. Now, why does that matter to me as an old Jewish guy moving furniture? You don't want to hurt yourself. Yes. Yeah. You don't want to hurt my back. So it's not that it's different. It's not that they're saying we're yellow and they're pink. It's, it's uh, meaningfully different because it's lower. I don't have to run the risk of hurting my back. You have to know what that is for you. Right. So that's why you use the term illumination is because yes. you're making people think as opposed to telling them the specific thing they need to think about. I'm letting them come to their own conclusions rather than me telling them because I have no credibility. Of course, I'm going to say I'm the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, if I told you I'm the best sales trainer, I mean, I happen to be, but no, I'm just kidding. You're not going to believe me because I'm, I'm saying it. I mean, nothing drives this point home better then a reference I'm going to use that most people are not going to remember probably. There was a product, got to be 10 or 15 years ago, called P90X. Yep. It was a, it was a workout product. Done it. Done it. Okay. okay. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys know this, but they made 17 versions of that commercial that bombed. Huh. Tony Horton had a genius idea. He came up with a concept called muscle confusion. Yep. And the premise of the commercial was the problem with traditional workouts is you plateau because you're doing the same thing. What you need is to confuse the muscles. It's called muscle confusion. It's what's called a unique method that he made up. <laughs> what's your muscle confusion, right? Because unless you have that, you're blending in, you're a white circle in a sea of white circles. Mm -hmm. So this is, what, this is what all the great cold emails do is they're shining a light on a unique method. I mean, I got one last week Josh, how do you know you're not overpaying for taxes? 
Small business owners in Florida, 93% of them are paying more than they should. Up for a conversation, no risk unless we get you at least $10,000 back. Very intriguing email. What is it that they know that I don't know about taxes? I had no idea that I could be overpaying, never even thought about it. Great email. So you, you have to have that unique method. What's that perspective that's meaningfully different that can help people kick more ass? So this is a, this is a good question on your points here, Josh. Um, from Steve, uh, he says, uh, what if the customer does not think they have any issues or pains, even though they do, how do you get interest? So it's not up to you to decide that. It's up to your prospect. So your job is to illuminate the, the problem. But if they don't think they have the problem, or the problem's not intense enough because problems alone aren't enough to inspire people to switch. Mm -hmm. I have a problem right now with my gutters. They get clogged. I had a guy come over and try to sell me an $11,000 gutter system that prevents my gutters from getting clogged. The problem is I hire my handyman for 200 bucks a year to unclog them. So it's a problem, but it's not a big expensive problem. It might be one day. So the idea is to plant the seed and to see if the prospect is motivated by that problem, if the problem is intense and frequent enough that they want to start a conversation with you. And it might be that it's not right now, but it might be one day because things change all the time. I mean, Joe Sugarman is a great direct response marketer. He talks about this story where his salesperson friend was trying to sell him life insurance. And Joe Sugarman just didn't believe, didn't want life insurance for like years until Joseph Sugarman looked out his window because he heard a siren and saw his neighbor being wheeled out on a gurney with a white sheet covering because he had died of a heart attack. His neighbor was 40 years old and Joe Sugarman was 36. And guess who Joe Sugarman called the next day? The guy selling life insurance. So, so your idea here is to plant seeds, but if the prospect isn't motivated, you can't motivate them. Mm -hmm. um, you don't create motivation, you align with it. So if in your iguana situation, if you had thought, Hey, I like iguanas, it's cool. <laughs> there would have been no conversation there. <laughs> it's a great point. It's a great point. Your benefits don't matter unless they matter to your prospect. Right. I mean, my, my, little, my little old Jewish grandma had a shitty toaster. One side worked, it made light toast and it took forever. And I would come in with these new toaster. Grandma, look at this new toaster. Two sides, dark, new toaster, user interface. She's like, I don't want it. I don't want your toaster. I'm good. I mean, I couldn't understand it. The toaster was clearly better. Yep. It had better benefits, but it wasn't better for my grandma because she was not in a rush. She only ate one piece of toast and she liked it light. <laughs> oh man. That's, and that's, that's, that's a problem that I see. Just because your benefits matter doesn't mean they matter to the person you're reaching out to at that time. So I guess in if we're going to take this back to a lesson that everyone can use is that um, you you illuminate a problem, you'll get a response. And if it doesn't align with that person's beliefs, or maybe even the timing, maybe they do care that their gutter, gutters are clogged, but, and they do know that something's gonna happen, but that's gonna happen in three years or four years. I already know it's gonna happen in three or four years, don't care right now. So how do we, now I've heard this, I've heard many different takes on this, but how do we as salespeople create urgency or at the very least stimulate the interest enough to, to make them think differently about that urgency? So it's a great question. All right, so a couple lines of thought on that. Um, and I, I, I do, I, I tell these in the context of a story because I think it's a good way to sort of burn it in. And these are all true stories. Mm -hmm. um, the, the sneaker example is actually a really good one. Um, in order for me to get interested in insoles, I have to know something I didn't know that can hurt me. So if you run in pronated, if you run in sneakers that are not made for pronated feet, mm -hmm. you can get injured, shin splints, knee problems on long distance runs. I'm going to do whatever I can to avoid that loss. I had a barbecue once only one side was working, but I was just shoving my salmon over to the left side because I was just cooking for my wife and I. And I was lighting it with a match because the igniter was broken, but I didn't want to replace the igniter because right. it's expensive and it's, I don't want to deal with it because I have limited resources, so do you, so does everyone. So I'm just lighting it with a match. Until someone said that was maintaining my grill, Josh, how do you know that you don't have a propane leak? And if you light your grill with a match, you can get a flare up and burn your face off. That's gonna, that's gonna get my, that's gonna crank up the struggleometer a little bit. Now, I could say to that, I could say to that, I don't care. 
I'll take the risk. At yep. which case you can't motivate me. You can't create motivation. You can only align with it. All you can do is shine a light, ask questions in a way to get people to think differently about how they're getting it done and what can hurt them. Let them decide if they want to engage, if it matters to them. And if not, move on. Mm -hmm. Next. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because no, it's, the buying, the, the, it's interesting. The buying process I see in all CRMs is a straight line. But the selling, no, I'm sorry, the selling process is this straight line, but the buying process is like this. Right. So you have to be a little patient and you can't assume that everyone you call has a need for what it is that you're selling. Detach from the outcome, let go of the assumptions. Shine the light, see if the metal detector beeps. If it doesn't, go to the next person. <laughs> it's right. a big place. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Uh, thank, thanks so much, Josh, because I think that uh, our audience really appreciate that. I know I do. Um, learning a little bit about that. Um, I think that um, it's we've we've gone through one sequence. I'd like to get a second one in. Um, and I, I really like your take on this. Uh, this is from Mark. Um, he's actually a member of, um, of Rev Genius. And he was telling us the other day that um, he found he found the confidence to actually do the work just with the community from the community and was able to actually get some pretty good response rate in his first sequence ever um, from a self-proclaimed, not a salesperson. Um, so I'm going to allow him to talk and tell you about a little bit about the sequence, about the context. Um, so I'm going to ask him to actually talk now. So Mark. Um, well, first off, I got I to hand it to Mark, first off, for being someone who sounds like he is invested in getting a little bit better every day. And not only that, not just reading about stuff and getting the knowledge, but actually doing because the knowledge thanks. doesn't change the outcome that doing does. So, so hot tip to you, Mark. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. I, I, I still have a confidence issue there. Um, uh, yeah. So uh, short summary, cybersecurity expert. been doing this for 20 years. I made uh, lots of money for other, lots of other people. So basically in 2014, I decided to start working for myself um environment changing so basically i have to switch to uh, selling advisory service like fractional services because of how the tax climate is in the uk short version <laughs> and um, um yeah so i started writing my own sequence and like uh, doing my own approaches and using sales nav and using outplay and, and pipe drive and such um uh, but yeah, it's very rough, but uh, i did manage to uh, uh, get a few meetings and i uh, managed to sign my first client um, um, for a nice uh, two and a half K a month. Um, um, so uh, I'm, I'm not complaining, uh, but uh, I still feel that um, not coming from a, a sales background uh, and being a um, notorious introvert, <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it probably can use some work because um, yeah, I, I, I did used to work. I did volunteer work specifically in bars and such when I was younger, not to be a complete nerd. Um, um, but probably my sequence still can use some, uh, yeah, attention. Excellent. So, uh, so yeah, I made a sequence with, with uh, uh, starting on LinkedIn, um, uh, emails, and then uh, uh, phone calls as follow-ups. But uh, Jeff has got the slides. So this is the sequence flow. Now, Josh, you asked uh, three context questions in the last uh, for the last one. Um, so. Mark, one of the first one again is, is who are you targeting? And you've told me uh, in your submission that it was executives at cyber, um, uh, small and medium sized enterprises with yes. security, cybersecurity threats. Uh, exactly. Right? What's the actual role? What's the actual role? Yeah. So, so I'm specifically targeting CEOs and CTOs and I'm specifically mm -hmm. targeting companies that don't have any current security leadership slash managers. So I'm specifically filtering out the companies that already have existing cybersecurity staff. Uh, because basically uh, I'm aiming for 50 to 200 employees where they big enough to have issues, but they're not big enough from a point of, from point of view employee wise to say, Hey, you know, we're going to hire a CISO, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's where I come in as a, as a fractional um, CISO or virtual CISO. So one thing that you're doing better than most people that have been doing this for 25 years okay. is that you're actually taking the time to be selective okay. of the accounts that you're going to reach out to. So you're not okay. just blasting everybody. Federal in my cap. It sounds Sorry. like you're kind of filtering based on some criteria there. So phenomenal job there. Um, the other thing you said that made my ears perk up a little bit is you said CEOs and CTOs. 
Yes. Those two people care about different things, I would think. Yeah, yeah. So this is why I I sequence with regards. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, sorry, not to interrupt. Um, I was going to say specifically one of the steps that I have is more targeted towards the CEO. So I have a step in there, which is um, the the step four or step three. I've got now step four, um, which is basically inviting them to a podcast. I don't know if you want to skip to that. Uh, yeah. so no, but my, my, the idea here is to create separate sequences for separate Yeah, roles. well, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I haven't done that yet. Um, mm-hmm. um, but, uh, but basically how I do it in, in the outreach is that basically part of it, I, 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 um, I point out the, the technical issues they're creating or technical depth, but I also point out the commercial applications of them not doing it. So that's why I'm trying okay. to, yeah, trying to fit it all in one okay. sequence, but probably I should spit it out. Yeah, so let me let me let's let's talk a little bit about this for a second. Um, I I firmly believe that the people that you're reaching out to are only interested in two things, okay. and it's not to be on your podcast. Yes. So they're interested in two things. One thing they're interested in is help me get away from a problem I may or may not know I have that can cause me a lot of pain. Yeah, so those problems two, are further, two, further in the sequence. Sorry, sorry. Go, ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the problem ones are further into the sequence, if, if it makes sense. Yeah, so let, let's just before we, I know everybody loves sending sequences <laughs> and everybody loves sending emails and 15 touches, but what ends up happening is people skip a step because everyone's addicted to speed. Everyone likes sending lots of emails. So, what I'm trying to do here is slow you down for a second. Okay. Because when I see an email inviting someone onto a podcast, it, it tells me that you may not be, you, you might be skipping a step. So what I'd like you to do is to not send an email. Just let's, let's not look at emails for a second. Let's just talk for a second. I know it's, okay. we're, we're going to get to the emails, but let's just, let's just talk Sounds for good. a second. Yeah. So we, we want people to get away from a problem they may or may not have or move towards something they desire. Yes. So Let's create a grid in Excel. You can do this afterwards, just like we talked about with Uber. And in, and in column number one, it's gonna be, what's the problem? And there's gonna be lots of problems. So for Uber, problem with the taxi, hard to get one at five o'clock on a Friday, hard to get one when it's snowing. Car might smell, could get dirty. Gotta be pressured into paying with cash. The next one is gonna be the implication of that problem. This is where we're gonna twist the knife. The problem is dirt gets on my sponge which is shit with a traditional bucket. The implication of that is it can scratch my car, which means I gotta spend 800 bucks to get it buffed out. All problems have implications. So column number one is the problem, specifically not optimizing supply chains, specifically the problem. Column two is the implication of that problem. Column number three is, what changes for the better after people give you money? And why does that matter? That's step one in this process. From there, we can start to develop messages that talk about the problem, not the podcast. Because again, if you buy into the belief that people only care about two things, help me get away from a problem I may or may not know I have, or help me get to a desired outcome that I want. Help me, help me finish the Iron Man faster versus help me make sure I don't get injured. Of the two, which do you think is the stronger motivator? Finish faster or make sure I don't get injured and have to walk for 10 miles? Uh, the injured one? Yes. That's right. So that's, that's step one in the process. Map out that grid. From there, we can start to write emails that don't talk about podcasts but talk about the problem. And the way it sounds is we have a trigger event, you know, the context. What is it that you saw about this person that inspired you? Hey, John, notice that you're responsible for technology or managing security over at X. That inspired me to reach out, curious to know, what are you doing to ensure your network doesn't get broken in due to X, Y, and Z that are typically not protected by Y? Hmm, I'm not sure because I'm using this, but I don't know about what you're talking about. Sentence three, companies like A and B and Acme and Beta are using our service to ensure this, but without having to pay X, Y, and Z or without having to do this. The differentiator we talked about before. Mm -hmm. And then sentence four, 
worth a conversation, interested in learning more. And then the next one is a different problem. Same exact kind of structure. Yes, yeah, so I'm making notes right now. I know it's being Yeah, 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 no problem. And there's, lot, there's lots of ways to start emails. We're talking about one structure. We're talking about illumination questions. But another one is, another great way to start an email after the trigger is, no, you don't have to, right? Josh, no, you don't have to walk the last 10 miles of your marathon. <laughs> Uh, I see, <laughs> right. It's I another, see. that's another, that's another one. Here's an, here's another structure that I just, I'm just taking from the great direct response copywriters. Um, there was a great Porsche ad from way back in the day. And it was a picture of a Porsche. And it said, um, honestly, did you ever dream about buying a Nissan? <laughs> right. Yes. So, uh, so if you were, if you're, if you're selling payroll services to a CEO, that's doing payroll manually, honestly, did you, when you were young, did you ever dream about doing payroll for your company one day. <laughs> Companies like AMB. So you, you switch up these mechanisms and these lines with your problems and you create these really delightful sort of sequences. Um, and then another secret that I use that I love is um, ending on a high note. What, what I mean by that is using a word like regardless or either way. So Josh, either way, remember pain is temporary, but the Instagram photos last a lifetime. What that does is it humanizes you and it also takes the pressure away that I'm here to sell you something. It just, it just feels good. There's a, there's a Japanese term called unami, which is the savory taste that you feel and taste in broth. It kind of makes the food taste good at the end. It's the same thing with these either way sentences. It's not either way, have a great day. That doesn't hit you as hard as Josh, either way, remember, Pain is temporary, but the Instagram photos last a lifetime. So to the extent that you can find something about that person or a kind of an inside joke, I'm going to end it that way. That'll make someone feel good when they're finished. And when you make people feel good, they're more inclined to lean into that because you cause that oxytocin rush. So Josh, you, what you're saying is you illuminate the problem. You identify kind of credibility of, of how you kind of solve for that problem. And then you end it, instead of making them feel really crappy about having that problem, you make them feel good using humor or whatever you have at your disposal. That's exactly it. Yeah, but cool. You said it really well. When you make people feel good, mm -hmm. they want more of you. Yeah. When you don't make people feel good, they want less of you. I think I was a Jeb Blunt or one of those guys. I think it was Jeb Blunt. He did this thing once. It was great. He's like, raise your hand if you like to be around people that don't make you feel good. <laughs> True. People are sitting on their hands. <laughs> right? yeah. I mean, one of the reasons I like talking to Katie is because she sends me challah pictures. It's an inside little thing that we have. She knows her market. She's yeah. not sending that to her Italian friends. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe she is. I have no idea. <laughs> I, 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 I can see a bakery coming next. And then, uh, <laughs> um, and then telling to I don't know like uh, bakeries that don't uh, serve the Jewish community yet. And then they can tell. <laughs> I mean, one of the one of the guys that does this the yeah. best is this guy Dale Dupree. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. This, this guy, I mean, he's a master at this. He uh, when he sold copy machines, I, he came on my radar. I'm like, how is a guy the number one copier salesman in the state of Florida? Like he's a copier salesman. So I called him up. I just, I'm just curious about you, Dale. How are you the number one copier salesman? And Dale said to me, I'm not a copier salesman. I'm the copier warrior. I'm like, what? <laughs> he his card. He's got like a sword yeah. and he fights against jammed up copy machines. He yeah. sends his prospects a sponge that looks like a brick. Yeah. And it has a note on it. And it said, if you've ever wanted to throw a brick at your copy machine, cause it was jamming up. Use this instead. Here's instructions. Put it in your right hand, aim, fire, and call me. I'm Dale Dupree, the copier warrior. <laughs> I mean, you know. Oh, that is illuminating a problem right there. I mean, sure all is. I think of is that scene of office space. Like every time I hear Dale say that, I think of office space and that is like, boom. <laughs> that, that, that's maybe something when I scale up, you know, like it'd be like send out a snail mail with, with gifts or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, not gifts. So what Dale did, it wasn't a gift. No, no, I, I know what you clever. mean. Yeah. I don't know. It, like, it's, I don't know. Yeah, mail, mail is tough now because of COVID, but... It's, it's, it's idea... good. It gets more interesting though. Like, you know, like um, maybe I can send the scissors and be like, you know, thinking of cutting that network cable because you got breached again. <laughs> there you go. Well, let uh, me ask you a question, Mark. Mark, <laughs> what, what, is, what is it? What sucks about how people are getting this job done today? 
so basically, in general, what happens is that uh, companies that are still at smaller ends, they basically ignore doing anything. Uh, then, uh, for instance, at one point, uh, either they get bots or they have an IPO uh, or very often. Uh, so then the, the uh, people come in and go like, hey, you know, this is a mess. Oh, guess what? We're actually going to take money out of the um, um, evaluation and we're going to pay you less. Um, what sometimes happens is that because when they grow, all of a sudden they get higher profile. Uh, or sometimes what happens is, is that because they grow and they start looking for it, they found out that actually they got breached like two years ago and somebody stole the intellectual property. Uh, those are just some of the scenarios, uh, but the banal, a lot of times um, smaller companies will go like, yeah, why bother? <laughs> because they, they think like it's a money hole. Uh, mm -hmm. But actually what's changing right now is that two things is that uh, cybersecurity insurance is getting more stricter. And then as, uh, um, procurement departments are saying that for you to be a supplier, you need to have X amount of cybersecurity insurance, which means that, hey, you actually have to comply with much stricter standards. And then the other end, procurement departments on the other end is also saying, if you don't do X and Y when it comes to your maturity, we don't even want you as a supplier. Hmm. Right, but, but if I'm not mature yet and I'm just starting out, what's the problem? The problem is a potential The problem is you don't know where to start. Like... And that's where I come in because I've done this so many times over. The problem is what was that, Mark? The problem is how do I they know They don't know where to problem? start. They don't know uh, but, where but to start. I don't start. want to start yet. I don't want to start before I know I have a problem. There's nothing to start. The solution doesn't mean anything. What's the problem? Um, yeah, that's a good one. Let's see, there's, there's is it you're going to lose business if you don't have this? Is it you're not? Gonna uh, yeah. So, so what, what's very common is that, uh, especially at small organizations, uh, a breach can have so much financial impact that I think like well, one in twenty or something um, can end up going out of business. Uh, mm -hmm. And also, the average breach will cost like 150k upwards. Okay, so so the problem that you solve is a breach, but you mentioned that people aren't doing anything about that today. I have a hard time believing that. I'm not I'm not questioning yeah, you so more about the this, reason for that. People is are that's... washing their car with a bucket today. They're not doing yeah, so, nothing. Uh, so so the, the reason for that is that um, cybersecurity insurance initially was given out like with a packet of butter, pretty pretty much. You can fill in like a one page sheet and you get cybersecurity insurance. So people go like, hey, boardrooms will go. Literally, I've been in boardrooms. They go like, you know, we got insurance. So actually, if you don't look for it then if something happens, then have plausible deniability, which is a quite an interesting thing. Um, so they go like, I don't want to look for it because then if something happens, I can say I didn't have the means to actually diagnose the issue. <laughs> uh, but uh, what's, what's happening is that um, uh, outside of fines, of course, where you already have this kind of thing, is that yeah, the, the, the procurement departments are getting stricter and cybersecurity insurance is getting stricter because they realize that people keep paying out policies so they go like, this is not a profitable product anymore. Um, so just to give you an idea, uh, there's one design firm in the US that went, uh, they, uh, their clients went like, actually, you need to have $10 million cybersecurity insurance. And if you don't, then you no, can no longer supply to us, period. <laughs> but if I, I'm asking, this, and we don't have to dwell on this, Mark, but I'm asking okay. a slightly different question. Okay. And this is, this, is a, this is common, by the way, because people are so focused on their product. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. And they created it, especially someone yeah. like you who's a founder and even salespeople. But your product doesn't have any value without a problem. So what we have to understand is what sucks? Nobody's sitting around not doing anything. I, I th probably, I've never seen anything, any situation. Everyone's washing their car with a bucket today. What is it that I don't know about my bucket that can hurt me? Well, that the, what the problem and, is, is that from the yeah. from the perspective of the customer, yeah, yeah. The, the the general the problem is they don't know they have a problem. If that makes sense. But what is the but what is the problem that you think that because I didn't know I had a problem with my bucket either until it was illuminated. So what is the problem you think they might have that they don't? What what do you know that they don't know? <sighs> yeah. So sometimes what happens is that you know I do like a a, a, a you know online investigation online and find out they got breached and nobody ever told them. That's some one thing. Um, um, so they could potentially, uh, I've been in a situation where a certain manufacturer lost their intellectual property for the next five, six years. Um, so that okay. uh, manufacturer literally went out that's, of business because they had no new product to bring out for five, six years, which killed the whole business. So that's, that's a good one. But how are people protecting against breaches today? What, what are they doing? Uh, well, the, the building controls, they're looking for events. They, they, they partner with an MSSP. Uh, to so say, what hey, I would say is, how do you know? So, so my illumination, they, they partner with an MSNP. Is that what you called it? 
uh, MSSP. Yeah, okay, so MSSP. I don't know what that means, but this is what I would say. Um, how do you know you're not susceptible to a, to data breaches that are not commonly caught by MSPs? Okay. Yeah, that's going to get me to think yeah, of. Well, that's going to get me to start to think like. What, yeah, what is yeah. It that so the, yeah, no, no, good one. Sorry. Um, I did. I have another email, the next one, that's basically offering a fee security assessment to see uh, if they, you know, if they have what they think they should have. Uh, but maybe that email is also completely wrong. But No, no, no. The, 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 the idea here is we have to illuminate a problem first. Yes. An assessment is only going to matter if, and that maybe is, that is a good offer um, that I maybe would include in that email. You know, how, how do you know that you're not susceptible to security breaches that are typically not caught by A, B, and C? Oh my God, I'm using that. How would I know? Um, not sure if it's a fit. Not sure if you have a breach, but if you'd like, we're doing a, an assessment that we can we can see if anything's yeah. Um, happening. Yeah. Here. So Je Jeff should have that email because it's the next one in my sequence. If you have it, um, yeah. again, feel free to shoot holes in it. Yeah. So we're just running on, on short on time. So we're just going to oh, okay. Sorry. The last one, but um, Mark, which email was that? Yeah, the the one after the the, the podcast invite, basically. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna do this real quick, and then yeah, uh, yeah, this will be I the did. last one for for today. Um, yeah, no, that's fine. I'm sorry. So, is this the right one, Mark? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, I try to be really brutal and let you say why bother, because uh, that's an often a concern when people go like, why. So it first, first thing on this email, first thing on this email is whenever you get a long email like this, Katie, okay. I'll ask you the question, or Jeff, just honestly, what's the first thing like? When you get a long email, what do you have a tendency to do? I'll get to it later. Yeah. Okay. So I don't even okay. look at Fine. these. Jeff knows yeah. that anyone that's been okay. on this before, I don't look at this. If you if no. you're expecting one, it doesn't look that long. I feel like in real life, but whenever I'm reading it on my phone and I'm more than three swipes, I'm not going to bother with it. And okay. this Fine. first paragraph, so the, five. So the, so the rule is the rule is no more than four sentences, one paragraph. In one no more sentence, than four sentences cannot one, be three lines long. <laughs> less, less, less than four sentences, one paragraph, no line breaks. And and data An from email that looks like a text. Data okay. from Salesloft yeah. looks uh, from last year has even come up with uh, fifty words or less to to add to the to what Josh is saying. Okay. And the reason for that, the reason for that, my hypothesis is, and I could this is just my gut, and maybe it's because I've been on TikTok too long, which is pretty, <laughs> freaking addicting, is these <laughs> things like TikTok. MS, you know, instant messenger, Facebook, they're yeah. like very, everything's very fast. Okay. Yeah. You know, and when we're getting a communication that requires us to burn a lot of calories yeah. from someone we don't know, it's really tough cognitively. So what we're looking for is a, an email that almost looks like a text where we're just going to get that visceral text-based reaction. Literal, literal three or four sentences, preferably three, no more than four, yeah. one paragraph, no line breaks. Yes. Yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, I'll, I'll rewrite. Um, but yeah, that, that, that was my idea. It's like, you know, like I, I offer a free thing where they just fill it in. They get a score back saying. But the thing, yeah, I, again, I'm going to say this one more time because I don't want to belabor okay. it. Your free thing doesn't mean anything without a problem that you've illuminated. So the, the idea of without, like we have to understand what is it that they don't know that can hurt them? Mm -hmm. Josh, what mm -hmm. are you doing to ensure your car wash mitt doesn't scratch your car? Acme and beta, beta are using us to ensure that dirt stays at the bottom of their bucket and off their car so it doesn't get scratched. Uh, That's yeah, a problem uh, I don't want. So you have, to, you have to figure out how are they getting the job done today? What's the bucket? What's wrong with the bucket that can hurt them that you can illuminate? Yeah, no, no, no I completely understand. I think this is uh, my, my, my whole industry problem, to be honest. We, we tend to engage with people that started doing something because they, they, know, they know they have a problem. <laughs> or are they yeah. willing to acknowledge they have a problem? If, if, if it makes sense. But your but your job but here's this is the your job though. Your, your job isn't. No, to no I, I get that your, again, and this is why I'm still in, at the beginning stages. Um, your your job is to illuminate problems. Yes. Yeah. No, nobody that you're reaching out to has a problem. They'd be looking for you. They're yes. they're doing fine. They're they're making progress. What your job is is to tell them what they don't know. That can hurt them. Yes. And yeah, that's where and, these illumination questions are really powerful. And if I, and if I could just, just, I have some experience in insurance. I run a flood mitigation company as well. Um, um, what I found is that with even like flood insurance, as an example, just actually renewing your insurance, a lot of people aren't able to do it anymore yeah. unless they do certain things. So 
I, I would maybe find out something like that. That seems to be an, a problem that's that's very effective to to kind of look at. Yeah. So that's that. That's I do have that in there, but maybe I should just cut out the rest and say. Um, I mean, look, listen, listen to this one sentence. Listen to this two sentence email that I got. Josh, ninety four percent of small business owners in Florida are overpaying taxes. How do you know you're not one of them? Yes. Even though they have an accountant, I don't know. Like that's going to make me scratch my head. And if these guys are more niched accountants that deal with people like me, perhaps I'm overpaying insurance. I'm overpaying for taxes. I'm going to take that conversation. Because the yeah, last so thing maybe, I want to do is, yeah. is, is not overpay taxes. Uh, 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 just in the, the, that aspect, I know I'm taking too much time already, but uh, is it an idea to say, hey, um, uh, uh, 20, uh, let's say, uh, I don't know exact percentage. I think it was 20%. Uh, did you know that 20% of small business go out of business due to cybersecurity breach? Or is that too long already? No, I mean, so, so th th again, again the, I the idea here is that w what, are they, what are they doing? Like, I think people know that. Maybe. Well, actually, that, 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 that's not, that's the, I've been doing this for 20 years. Uh, people don't know it until you point it out. Um, okay. Basically, my experience is, is that either I've been in a organization that knew they were breached, or I walked into the organization and I had to tell them they were breached. I, I, I can't remember one organization where one of the things was not the case. Yeah, then and I like, but I like were, that one. You know, are, are yeah. you aware that 20% of businesses like you go out of business due to a security breach? How do you know um, you're, you're not susceptible? Yeah, how do you know you're part of the 80%? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to avoid the fear, uncertainty, doubt because that's the cybersecurity thing. Um, but yeah, I, I, that's why I was like, hey, uh, do you want to get new clients if you, you know, like trying to focus on that? Um, uh, again, if I walk into a casino and I lose 50 bucks yeah. versus gaining 50 bucks, yeah. the 50 bucks I lost is going to hit me and stick with me longer because of a psychological bias okay, called okay, loss aversion. Yeah. So yes. problems and pains typically motivate people more than gains. Yes. No, no, that sounds good. Uh, I'll, I think I'll go along with that one. And uh, to be honest, I can A-B test a few ones and, and put it in the tool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, cut it down. Um, and then the other, the other ones, like you said, uh, I already, the other emails, you're not going to show uh, Jeff <laughs> well, already over time. But basically, it's yeah. like a problem, um, what I've done at the company. And then, uh, like, what's your thought? Uh, those are the once uh, later. Yeah, again, later. again, I, again, I don't want to belabor this. Nobody cares about okay. what you've done in another company. They care about what you can do for them. Okay. Those two things might sound similar, but they're very different approaches. Okay. I don't care what your product does. Yes. I care what your product does for me. I don't care that you do braces made out of steel. I oh, care yeah, that, that I can I, get a, no. yeah. Yeah, and I put it in there because they like, you know, they want to see like, hey, proof, like you can do that. Uh, but it's true. Like, uh, how uh, I could be like, uh, how would you like to know how you can prevent that or something like that? Without kidding, saying like company X, because it's true, they don't care about company X. No, no, no. Um, let me see if I can say this better. Third party credibility is effective once you set it up, right? So, first yeah. sentence, Josh. Notice that you signed up for Iron Man Cozumel. That's the trigger. That's the context. Yes. Second sentence. What are you doing to ensure your 26.2 mile run doesn't turn into a Frankenstein walk? Hmm. <laughs> Other triathletes that are in their fifties, like Mark and John are using our approach to make sure they don't have to walk the last 10 miles of the run, staying in zone two for 26.2. Interested in learning how they're doing it? Either way, Remember, pain is temporary, but the Instagram photos last a lifetime. That's the idea. That's the sort of how it should sound. Yes. Okay. So again, uh, trigger. I'll, I'll, I'll stick to yeah, trigger to sentence. The loss trigger, version. trigger, trigger, think, third party, talk. Trigger, think, third party validation, talk. And then if you want the either way sentence. Thanks. Thanks again. Uh, again. Um, I have to start somewhere. Um. <laughs>
<laughs> Mark, Mark, starting with a 5% booked meeting and a 1% close rate from a hundred prospect emails, you're, you're definitely Phenomenal. starting on the right path, my friend. So, Absolutely. Yeah. No, like, um, uh, I'm just so like, only, I, I, yeah, yeah. and, and, and for having the courage to join uh, us on this panel today and, 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 you know, get critiqued live, you know, that's fantastic. We really appreciate you. Um, and, um, yeah. Uh, look, hey Mark, have you asked your, have you asked your customer if they know anybody else like them that could benefit from what you do? Uh, well, to be fair, you know, let's be honest. I just signed the customers. <laughs> it might be a bit too early. Uh, um, no, never too uh, early not. for a referral. That's easy. Yeah, money. I, I think that, I think that's a bit too early. Um, it, it's it's really all, yeah. It's a, a difficult climate right now uh, uh, for a small business owner already. Um, I, I am going to do that later, of course, um, um, because uh, yeah, you know, they go as well. Like yeah, we don't have cybersecurity stuff, and now they're. Um, clients went like, hey, uh, if you want us to continue to do business with you, you need to do start and doing X and Y because uh, we can visibly see that you don't have cybersecurity stuff and we don't trust you. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, so I'm going to work with them and basically re-engineer everything so, and, to, and basically empower their, their existing stuff so they don't have to resort to having to hire a whole security department basically. Love it. Perfect. Perfect. Well, yeah. Thanks again, Mark. Um, we're going to wrap up now, Thank but, you. uh, good, good, good on you for your joining us. So, um, with that, with that said, um, Josh, Katie, let's talk about one thing that we learned today. One thing that the, the listeners can take home, um, with them. How do you write better sequences, Josh? Uh, don't ask about problems, find them. Learn and understand the job your prospect wants. Stop writing sequences. Step one. Mm -hmm. Step two, what sucks about how your prospect is getting the job done before they give you money? Specifically, can you observe it? Can you see it specifically? When you're describing it, does it sound like something that somebody would actually tell you over coffee or does it sound like marketing jargon? If not, stay on step one, interview five customers. Stop writing sequences before you do that. Step two, what changes for the better after people give you money? Get a real good handle on that and then start to write your emails rather than writing your emails first. Right on, right on. Katie, what do you say? Um, I definitely think my number one takeaway is your prospect doesn't care who you are. They don't care about the marketing. As Jeff knows, I always like to poop on marketing. Marketing <laughs> crap that you can get. <laughs> Says they, the marketer. <laughs> I know. Well, <laughs> uh, they just they just want to know what are you going to do to make their life easier. And whenever you understand what that is, you know, that's that's really where the magic comes from. And I think that kind of wraps under you know consultative selling is one: how are you able to show them that there can be a problem, but then also how how does your solution solve their problem, and is it a big enough problem? to make them want to make a switch. Yeah. You don't want to sell $11,000 gutter solutions to people that can solve the problem for 200. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Us damn awesome. DIYers. <laughs> <laughs> well, and taking, taking both of what you said and, and really thinking about it as being direct. Um, Josh, you had a really good point about the podcast invite. If you're talking to somebody who wants to make progress in their world, and you're talking about a podcast they don't know about, don't care about, never listen to, and whatever else, you're not really going to get very far with them. But if you're really talking about directly something you know from your either your customers or your research or whatever that you know they have, then be direct about it and get a response that actually leads to something helpful. Not just a, hey, I really like that. Sure, I love podcasts. Let's go. But yes, I want to do business with you. Or yes, I want to explore doing business with you. <laughs> if you if you can't help me make progress, you're not going to help me be happier. That, that's right. life. Like we are we we are at our happy. Katie is at her happiest when she's making a challah. Why? Because she's making progress. When the challah is done, she likes it. She looks at it, but then it's over, and mm -hmm. then she gets happy again when she's making progress on the next challah. Like Katie's challah is a metaphor for life and sales. Katie should write a book called Hala Selling. <laughs> Register trademark. <laughs> Hala Selling. Hashtag Katie, Hala right? Selling. 
<laughs> my grandma would love you, Katie. My grandma would love you to pieces. Oh, man. <laughs> well, hey, um, both of you, um, thank you both for taking the time today. Josh, thanks for coming in and joining Katie and I on this uh, regular event that we my do. Pleasure. Um, I think our listeners got a lot of value out of this. And even one, uh, one of our members said, uh, um, can you talk slower so we can unpack everything <laughs> you said? Um, so luckily, we're going to be sending out the recording tomorrow to those who registered. Um, so check your inbox tomorrow morning from me. Um, and uh, yeah, that said, I'll, we'll see you all on the next sequence practice. Looking forward to helping you one up your game and fill your funnel. Oh, and don't forget. Oh register beyondquota.saleshacker.com you'll be able to learn from jeff swan and josh braun we're getting into all the nitty-gritty so if you miss anything you'll be able to ask all the questions that you want <laughs> and learn as much as you can from these two fabulous gentlemen so <laughs> excellent thank you katie all thank right you take care thanks for inviting me guys have a good one thank bye you all bye